Okay, students, welcome to class. Um, are we solving a very good question here under statistics? Are we drawing or are we teaching you how to draw an OGIV that is a cumulative frequency curve? Now, that is the A part of the question. Then the B part is to use the curve to estimate the median mark, the semi interquartile range at the 70th percentile. Then we have the C part of the question. So I would like you to uh, follow me carefully to learn, okay? Now let's come to the solution. In drawing an OGIF or a cumulative frequency curve, there are two basic things you need to know. The first one is the upper class boundary and the second is the cumulative frequencies. Once you have this, you are okay. And we have our table. Uh, the class interval is actually gotten from the question, so also the frequency. So let me teach you how to actually draw or how to get your cumulative frequency and the class boundaries, which are the things we need. Now, the first of the frequencies here for the class interval 1 to 10 is 4, so the cumulative frequency is 4. Now, the method to get it is this. 5 plus 4, we have 9. 9 plus 9, 18. You know, you continue. This is 29. Okay. 39. Then I have uh, 47. Then the last is 50. Now, take note. Whenever you are doing this and the last entry under the cumulative frequency column is not equal to the total frequency, you are wrong. So you have to go back and check. Then you correct yourself. Okay. But here we are very correct. Total frequency is 50. And the last is also 50. Then we move to go get our class boundaries, which is CB. Now this is going to be 0 0.5 to 10.5. Then this is 10.5 to 20.5. So the last one here is uh 60.5 to 70.5 now i have the two things i need okay now the upper class boundary will be this this is just what i need okay and i need the cumulative frequency so i will summarize it get my graph to draw my ogiv then show you how to draw the ogiv so let's go Okay, this is a summary. You can see on the screen, you have your cumulative frequency. Then you have the upper class boundary. Okay, now I have my graph and everything well written out. I have um, my y-axis, which shows the cumulative frequency. Then I have my x-axis, which I have the upper class boundary. So I have everything well written out so let me move ahead to actually um, plot and draw the curve for the cumulative frequency of 4 or for the upper class boundary of 10.5 the cumulative frequency is 4 so i have 10.5 here and this is where i have my 4 the next is 20.5 and 9 so this is where i have my 9 the next is 30.5 and 18. 30.5 against 18 is going to be here. Okay. Then I have 40.5 and 29. And uh, this is where I'm going to have my 29. Okay. I have it here. Then the next is um, 39. And uh, this is where I will have my 39. Then I have the next 60.5 and 47. Uh, this is 45, 46, 47. Then the last, of course, is 50. So I have it here. All right. Now, what I will do is to connect this point smoothly. Okay. I'm not going to use a ruler because it's a curve. So I will connect the curve smoothly. Can you just see the way I'm connecting this curve? It's actually very smooth. All right. So we'll move, we'll move. Mm, good. So I've gotten my curve 
and I can actually start from the origin. So let me make it this way so that it's um, I have a smooth curve from the origin. Okay, so this is my uh, cumulative frequency curve. That is the first question. So we're done with the first question. Let's go get the second question. The second question, that is the B part, says we should use our curve to estimate the median mark. So let's go quickly to get our median mark. Okay, how do we get our median mark? Uh, median mark, uh, that is B, I, is our median. And um, the median is actually Q2, which is known as the mid-quartile. We call it the mid-quartile. All right, is the mid quarter. So, how do I get this? Q2 is n by 2, okay, which n stands, uh, stands for the total frequency of 50, all right? The, this is going to be the 25th. So, uh, quickly, let me take note of this. 25 is not the median, but the position where we can actually find the median. So, we we'll go to the uh, graph or to the uh, um, OGIF. This is where we have 25. So you use your ruler. Make sure you trace it smoothly. Trace it smoothly. All right. Where it touched the curve, then you read off your value downward. Now you can see where I'm reading my value downward. All right. So this is where it ends. Now I'll pick my reading. Okay. Now, this is uh, 30.5, this is 32.5, this is 34.5, so this is 36.5. So, of course, my median is 36.5. So, I will now come and write my median from my graph is 36.5. Now, this answer is based on my own work. So, you have to make your work as neat as possible, as accurate as possible, okay, for you to get the right uh, answer. Then let's go. What's the next thing? The next thing says uh, we should find the semi interquartile range. How do I get the semi interquartile range? Now, this is um, II, the semi interquartile range. Okay, semi interquartile range. Now, the semi interquartile range is actually Q3 minus Q1 all over 2. Now, Q3 minus Q1 on its own is intercortal range. Then what is Q3? Q3 is um, the upper quartile, okay? Is the upper quartile. And how do we get it? Um, it is going to be Q3 is 3 over 4N. That is the position. And this is going to be 3 over 4 uh, times 50, okay? Uh, which is 37.5, the position 37.5. So quickly, I will go to my graph. Now, don't forget to write this as Q2, okay? So that to show the examiner that you know what you're doing. So I need 37.5. This is 36.5. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, this is 36. This is 37. That is 37.5 is right at the middle here. Okay, so I will now trace it with my ruler. You can see where it touched the curve. This is where it touched the curve. I'll read off my value downward. So taking it downward, all right, smoothly so that I will not make any mistake. Okay, so this is where I have it. And this is 40.5. This is 42.5, 44.5, uh, 46.5, 48.5. That is what I have. So quickly, I'll move. My Q3 is 48.5. So I'm done with that. Then the next thing is for me to get my Q1. All right, Q1. And Q1 is known as the lower quartile. And how do I get it? Q1 is 1 over 4. That is 1 fourth of N. That is the position, which is going to be 1 over 4 times... 50 which is going to be this okay so the same thing i will go to my graph and trace all right where do i get 12.5 okay this is 11 this is uh 
12, then 12.5 12 is right at the middle. Okay, it's right at the middle here. So I'll pick my ruler, make sure I take it, I trace it fine. You can see where I touch the curve. I'll read off my value downward. All right, very important. So I have it here. Now, if you check, this is um. So here is 22.5, here is 24.5. So let's say 25.5, okay? Approximately 25.5. So I will go and make sure I have my Q1 as uh, 25.5, as I read. Okay, based on my own work here. Then, good. I need my semi intercotta range. So finally, you remember, is Q3 uh, minus Q1 all over 2 which is going to be 48.5 minus 25.5 all over 2 and we have it as 23 okay over 2 which we have 11.5 so i've gotten my um semi intercotta range so the next question is um, the 70th percentile. So to get the 70th percentile is this. Uh, that is Roman figure 3. 70th percentile means 70% of N. That is how to get it. All right. So this is going to be 70 all over 100 times 50. Uh, the position which will be. 35th okay so we'll go straight just as we did um the others but recall this is is my q1 and this is my q3 so where is 35 can you see 35 this is where 35 is so you trace it to okay for you to get the 78th percentile you trace it good where it touched the curve this is where it touched the curve i read of my value downward you can see that i'm drawing it downward you can see that I'm drawing it downward. Okay. Make sure it is as accurate as possible. So this is where I have it. So this is 40.5. This is 42.5. This is 44.5. Uh, and this is 46.5. So I've gotten uh, my 70th percentile as 46.5. Good. I'm done. So let's go to the C part of the question. The C part of the question says, um, if 18% of the applicants failed, what is the cutoff mark? Okay. Now, since we are told 18% of the applicants failed, now we need to get the actual number that failed. So it's going to be 18% of N. That is the number that actually failed, which is 18 over 100 times uh 50 now here one and here two of course we are going to have nine so actually nine people or nine applicants actually failed so this is what you are going to do to get the cutoff mark you come over to your graph now at the cumulative frequency side is where you have number of people so go get your nine this is where i have my nine so i will take it good you see, this is where it coincides with this. So I read off my value downward. And what do I have? I have 20.5. So what that means is that the cutoff mark is 20.5%. So if you score above 20.5, you actually pass. Score below, you failed. So I want to believe it's a very good question. You've learned a lot. So just take your time watch the video over and over make sure you have a very good grasp of the uh, 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 explanation okay and don't forget to subscribe don't forget to pass your comment and like the video thank you so much